Welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at a recent BBC report that certain brand of chargers can be hacked. And we're going to be looking at what these chargers are, how they do hack them, and what it leaves you exposed to. We're also going to be discussing should you be worried or not worried. Firstly, let's talk about the two charges that were affected. And it's worth mentioning before we go into this, these were just the two charges that were mentioned in the report. It doesn't necessarily mean they're the only two charges that can be hacked. In fact, there may be much more than these two charges. They just weren't discussed in the report for individual reasons. But these are just the main two that were mentioned. The first charge I mentioned was this one, Warbox. And it's one that I've actually done a review on. I've tested... Many, many people may know a whole load of chargers and it warbox was actually one that i actually really quite liked i really like some of the products in it so to learn it's been hacked was a little bit of a shock now the hacking mechanism on this allowed them full access to your charger allowing hackers to take control of the charger and allow them access to charge on your charger but disallow you access to charge on their charger so they could basically hack this charger turn your access off and allow them to charge now another thing they mentioned is they mentioned this raspberry pi at the back and they mentioned that because it is removable if a hacker had physical access to this charger and unscrewed it and removed this board they could get your wi-fi password now we're going to discuss this in more detail shortly but let's first about look what other charger was affected and the other charger affected was the project ev charger now it's not a charger that i've reviewed or tested yet because they've just not sent me one but their weakness was even worse than Warbox. It allowed greater access and included sideloading firmware onto the device, which could mean they could upload their own operating systems, they could brick it and make it a completely useless uh, unit, they could turn it into a botnet, which basically means they could use it to send out spam or steal data, uh, and they could even use it to attack other servers. Now, both these issues on both these chargers are caused by poor authentication on the app, on the device that allows hackers access via the API. Both companies have released firmware updates, and if you have either of these two units, ensure that you go into the firmware immediately and update it to the latest firmware if it's not a connected device as in it's not on the internet then i wouldn't worry too much but i'd still recommend that you try and plug it in at least once to get a firmware update to the latest version now let's get serious for a minute what do these hacks mean now firstly looking at the project ev what are your risks well seeing hackers didn't need physical access to the device it does mean a fairly large breach and it was fairly risky if you were running old firmware now luckily for everyone white hackers found this issue way before we think any hackers found it at least we think any hackers found it or it went public to any hackers so therefore it gave the company enough time to fix this issue and therefore customers shouldn't be affected it does raise the question on why project tv and in a minute warbox haven't played an external firm to do a security review like this has been performed on them, you know, without their consent, so to speak. That's the way white hackers work. They they hack something and then they see basically if the company's got a hacking bounty and take that bounty. Well, most major tech companies have this, even Tesla. Uh, they, if you hack a Tesla, I think they give you a million pound or they might give you a Model Y now, but they change it every couple of years. But most big, massive tech companies or involved in tech have a bounty if you hack their charger. Uh, and it does you know to back to the question why this firm didn't check these things because these apis are basic security protocols that they should have had locked down and we need to really forget about that because both firmwares have been updated but warbox the unit has been updated and the report commented that because it has that removable raspberry pi that we just looked at before hackers could still have a physical access to it could come basically round to your house uh, remove the pi from hacking and then uh, basically it means that they have access and they could hack it and this is where I have slightly problems with the report first of all if a hacker hacked this and stopped your car from charging uh, you'd realize pretty quickly if someone was parked on your drive and your neighbor spotted a car that you didn't know uh, 
they tell you and then you'd be suspicious again if you had your charger on lock. So both those instances for both charges are extremely unlikely. But what about if the hacker removed this Raspberry Pi and gained access to your Wi-Fi network? Well, if they did remove this Raspberry Pi and gain access to your Wi-Fi network, what could they do? Well, first of all, they could interfere with your Wi-Fi settings in your router if your router is using a default username and password that came with your router. And yes, the ones that are computer generated that look really long and complicated can still, believe it or not, be guessed with password tools. So if you haven't changed it, there's a small chance that hackers could gain access to your router, change your router settings to divert traffic from normal websites to the hacker's website, be this a bank page to make it look like a genuine bank login or a PayPal login, and they could then steal that information, those usernames and passwords from you. So it is a fairly significant risk if they remove this Raspberry Pi out and got your Wi-Fi access. However, the BBC report did a couple of things that were a bit naughty. Now, first of all, they called this a uh, certain, I think they call it a 2015 Raspberry Pi, and he said, oh, it only belongs in a classroom. It's just an educational computer. No, th this Raspberry Pi, this Pacific board was made specifically for commercial applications like this, like putting in a charger, like putting in other devices. It was specifically made for that purpose. So that report is a little bit unfair in the way they called it. I won't blame the reporter, but I'm blaming the reporter because he really should have known his stuff and not said that that was a non-commercial piece of equipment because it is. So how are you going to get this removed? Well, first of all, a hacker with enough skill would have to drive past your house and see this wall box unit. OK, so first of all, very unlikely that they're going to drive past your house and be a hacker and see this wall box unit. But let's just pretend they did. So next, they're going to go to your wall box unit and they're going to unscrew the little screw at the bottom here. And then they're going to clip off this front panel here. By the way, all white still connected to 240 volts. And then what they're going to do is they're going to lift up this cover, why it's still connected to 240 volts, and they're going to then remove this ribbon cable, which will make this front panel a little bit then safe to work with, and then they could get the Raspberry Pi out. But the, the thing is, they still have to see your charger, and then unscrew it while it's connected to 240 volts to get your Wi-Fi password for your network that you might have changed the default username and password on already. I just personally don't see it. Now, another comment said on the program was actually by the security firm, and they said that they can't see any way that Warbox could fix this security flaw, and they can't think of any other way that they could do it. And one, uh, they actually suggested that customers who were worried about this super glue this cover shut, basically making it irreparable or inserviceable if there's ever a electrical fault inside. So don't super glue the cover shut. That would be a stupid idea. In fact, if you really, really are worried and you're really concerned about this being hacked, then turn off the power, take the front cover off, and epoxy the Raspberry Pi in to the board. And that's pretty much all you'd need to do. Now, this is, in theory, possible in pretty much all EV chargers sold today, not just the Warbox unit. Most chargers, I've removed the Mini Pi or similar type computer inside so if you have physical access to most chargers most chargers would be acceptable to this kind of hack to be fair the raspberry pi is a bit more of a known computer entity so therefore you know hackers wouldn't spend as much time trying to find the wi-fi keys inside it or decrypting them but the point is it's extremely unlikely that they're going to come over and find your Raspberry Pi and do this to it. Now, it does raise the question, as we see more and more EV chargers, then if hackers will see more and more EV chargers on the wall, so is this risk of security? Because we're getting to the point where soon a hacker could just drive down the seat and every house on the street should, should have an EV charger soon. And that's the point where security like this is going to need to be fixed. At the moment it's probably unlikely that you're going to have that certain brand of charger that the hacker knows how to hack and then they know where you are. But as we move forward, we're going to see more and more of these charges and more likelihood that they could be hacked, which is why the government 
is actually legislating that EV home chargers have a certain level of security. My only worry is the OLEV or OZEV grant for chargers is going away soon. So it's going to be quite hard to legislate that on the smart charging spectrum if people could just go and buy any old rubbish off it, you know, Amazon or eBay. And but looking at the fact that most people don't even look at the pen fault safety or RCD or DC leakage protection of certain chargers and are just willing to install them willy-nilly, then, yeah, security might not be something that's overlooked by certain companies. So I do trust that Wallbox will fix the firmware issue. I do hope that Wallbox start epoxying this Raspberry Pi inside the board. I do hope that if certain customers are worried about this wallbox will go back out to those customers and epoxy that thing back in the board but if you are seriously worried about it then ring up wallbox ring up your charging company but they're they are not the only company with raspberry pis inside are you worried let me know down in the comments thank you very very much and i'll see you again next week goodbye